Welcome to this webinar series, which is all about the recently published UK guidelines for HIV PEP published in 2021. I'm Dr. Krisha Patel, and I'm a sexual offences examiner working in sexual assault referral centres. In this video, I will talk about the risk benefit analysis, the side effects of taking PEP, and other important points to discuss with the patient when offering PEP. Currently recommended PEP regimes are very safe and well tolerated. However, the potential benefit of PEP must always be balanced with the possibility of side effects or toxicity. The other factors to consider when doing a risk benefit analysis is the cost of the medication, which is over £500 for a full 28 day course of PEP, as well as the inconvenience for the patient of having to take the medications daily and attend any follow-up appointments with the genitourinary clinic and have follow-up blood tests. These are the reasons why we can't just offer PEP to everyone. We need to do the risk-benefit analysis to make sure it's worthwhile offering PEP. So based on the risk-benefit analysis, once a decision has been made to offer PEP, we need to discuss the following things with the client. Antiretrovirals are unlicensed for PEP and there is a lack of conclusive data for PEP efficacy. Animal studies provide evidence for PEP efficacy. Of course, ethically, it would not be possible to perform any gold standard randomized controlled trials to determine the efficacy of PEP. However, there is data from human studies where we look at observational studies and studies of vertical transmission from mother to baby. There is a need for condom protection until the blood test for HIV confirms the person is negative. Most people do not get significant side effects and PEP is usually safe and well tolerated. Any side effects are typically mild and transient. Common side effects include headache, dizziness, diarrhea and nausea, insomnia and abdominal pain. Rare side effects include myopathy and rhabdomyolysis. Therefore, caution should be taken in individuals with a history of myopathy or where there are medicinal products associated with these conditions such as statins. The patient needs to be advised of the need for further follow-up with the genitourinary team so that they can have baseline bloods and a further HIV blood test for confirmation of whether the person has HIV or not after roughly 11 weeks. And that's because blood tests for HIV taken within the first 11 weeks following an exposure may not be completely accurate. Drug-drug interactions. There are many drug-drug interactions with antiretroviral therapies, and therefore we always need to check what medications the patient is taking using a reliable source such as the website HIV Drug Interactions Checker, and I'll add a link to that in the description box below. We have to take a full medication history from our patients, taking into account their prescribed medications, as well as their non-prescribed medications, herbal remedies and other medications. And in particular, we need to ask about any antacids that they use like Gaviscon, and if they're taking any iron supplements or multivitamins. Multivitamins and antacids can affect the absorption of PEP. Therefore, we should ask our patients not to take any non-essential medications if possible, such as herbal remedies and multivitamins. We need to stress adherence to the full 28-day course of medications. Ideally, the medication should be taken at the same time every day to keep the level of the drug steady in the blood. So if the patient is given a three or five day starter pack in the SARC or in the A&E setting, we have to stress to them the importance of making sure they do not run out of medications and that they must attend a follow-up appointment with the gum team within that time so there is no interruption in the 28 day course of PEP. So this is the missed dose guidance in the BASH guidelines. If you forget to take a dose, take it as soon as you remember it. However, if it is time for your next dose, skip the missed dose 
and go back to your regular schedule. Do not take a double dose to make up for a forgotten dose. And this is crucial. If more than 48 hours has elapsed since the last dose, then discontinue PEP. So if the patient misses PEP for two days, 48 hours, then they have to discontinue PEP because it's no longer going to be effective. We should also consider the risk of other sexually transmitted infections, such as chlamydia and gonorrhea and other bloodborne viruses, such as the risk of hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Emergency contraception may also need to be offered. We need to let the patient know to seek medical attention if there are symptoms of seroconversion. And patients will often forget what you tell them. So it's really useful to give them a leaflet, which gives them all this information. In the setting that I see patients in the sexual assault referral center, we don't really know how much information someone is taking in when they may be distressed after a significant trauma. So a leaflet can be really helpful for them to read the next day. And the BASH guidelines have produced in Appendix B a risk assessment pro forma that can be used in emergency departments. And it guides you through the important things that you need to ask the patient. So things like documenting the time of the exposure, thinking about the past medical history and the medication history. And there's a really useful checklist of discussion points to talk about with your patient, which is most of the things I've already gone through in this video. Thank you for listening. And if you found this session useful, then please check out the rest of the series and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.